This is Georgia. Like many other four-year-olds, she goes to nursery school. But Georgia is different from other children because she has infantile autism and for a year and a half has been going to a special nursery school. Infantile autism is a medical mystery. Its cause, still unknown, and the subject of much debate and controversy. For children like Georgia, the condition begins very early. Georgia was not yet two years old when her worried parents took her for medical evaluation. They were concerned and upset because she did not talk and did not respond to direction. It was never clear whether Georgia could not understand or did not choose to comply. Yet she has always shown some signs of intelligence, despite the apparent retardation. Bizarre mannerisms like twiddling, flicking, tonguing, and flapping are a part of infantile autism. But one of the chief characteristics is the child's marked unrelatedness and insistence on isolated play. The prognosis for this kind of child is grim, unless they can be reached at an early age. When Georgia began at school, she was almost three years old. She cried most of the morning, or sat on the floor and rocked endlessly and mechanically from side to side, a vacant, empty expression on her face. She held some toys, but did not really play. A cardboard box provided by her teacher served as a kind of retreat. There she stayed, withdrawn for months, slowly learning to tolerate the children the staff, and the classroom. In a class with two teachers, Georgia is one of six children, all of whom have serious problems in learning and socializing. Some have been diagnosed as cases of childhood schizophrenia or psychosis. Others are thought to be neurologically impaired. Each child is in need of individual programming and each requires skilled and sensitive direction. Daily routines are a major problem. Toilet training, hand washing, dressing and undressing, and even sleeping all present difficulties. Most of these children resist learning to do for themselves and might always remain dependent, always require help. For this reason, the teachers are constantly encouraging the children to develop more skill and independence in caring for themselves. the physical contact the teacher makes with the child. And the constant touching is an important way of getting through. The autistic child will use the teacher's hand as an extension of her own. For Georgia, who for months would touch nothing in the classroom, her teacher's hand was a beginning. Georgia has never enjoyed eating. When she first came to school, she refused all food and drink, preferring to twiddle. Until she was three, she ate only certain baby foods and would only drink one kind of juice from one special cup which had to be held for her. Each progressive step, from permitting the teacher to hold the cup for her to holding it and drinking from it herself has been slow and painful.
While this film was being made, Georgia cautiously took a major step. She tried some new foods. A game of finger painting led to finger feeding. After many months of food inducements which had met with failure, she now helps herself to and enjoys ice cream and whipped cream. Teacher's playful, persistent games are a way of enticing the child out of her solitary world. Intrusions are an important school technique designed to compel the child to cope and to relate. It is better for Georgia to resist and fight the teacher than to always sit in meaningless emptiness. Ronnie is a child who also gets upset when his routine is changed or interrupted. He alternates between hyperactivity and withdrawal. Sometimes he is so upset he attacks his teacher or hits himself. Fortunately, he is able to turn to his teacher for comfort. The teachers build on the children's interest in music and rhythm and try in this way to involve them in individual play as well as some structured group activities. The children are saturated with experiences which are designed to promote comprehension and language because we know how important it is for them to acquire meaningful speech by the time they are six. Progress is slow, but there have been happy and rewarding moments. Last year and a half at school, Georgia has made small but significant gains. She no longer prefers to be alone. She seems to understand more and is beginning to make sounds. 
She's eager to come to school and is always aware of and usually part of her small classroom world. She's becoming more like other children her own age. Now she can laugh, hold hands, and enjoy games. Experience has shown that with each year that passes, the children of five or older who are not in a program have less of a chance. Georgia has a chance for a real life because she's in a special school. All the Georgias need this chance. If they don't get it, they become a burden to their families or to the community. It would cost the state more than $200,000 to keep each child locked in an institution for a lifetime. There are better ways to spend this money. On research, on special schools, and programs that give all the children a chance. At home, with their families.